Even though the Bible declares that we are all sinners, it also tells us that God loves us infinitely. And that is why God made us alive together with Christ. He raised us together and made us to sit in heavenly places in Him, all because of His unconditional love for mankind. The third ladder, the religious leaders, the Pharisees as well, and as the majority of the Jews believe that they can be saved by works of righteousness or by right doing. And just as most of us today, some of us believe that we do not need to go to church or to spend our useful hours reading the Bible. So far, we try to do the right things and show love to others. They will still be saved. But the Bible is telling us in Titus 3, 3 to 6, For we ourselves also, we are sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful, and hating one another. But after that, the kindness and love of God our Savior towards man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us, by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior. The cornerstone of our salvation is God's love for sinners. Scripture declares that God is love, as we read in 1 John 4, 8. And this love is not just one of God's characteristics, but is what He is. And by the very nature, and therefore all that He does is in the context of His love. And the ladder number four, when Jesus came into the world, humanity knew the law of God of love according to the law of Moses. But our Lord opened our eyes to the love of God. As we read in Matthew, 5, 43 to 45. Ye have heard that it has been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he makes his son to rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. The word neighbor uh, here refers to fellow Jews and the word enemy refers to the Gentiles. We humans, we know how to love our own kind. But it is impossible for us to love our enemies in and ourselves. And this type of discrimination is even still within our modern societies today. Many nations have been plunged into civil war and internal crisis because of the absence of God's love in the hands of the leaders and warlords. One tribal group trying to eliminate and gain absolute control over another tribal group of the same nation. And this was what brought almost tears to my ears when somebody was giving testimony on Friday about his life history, how he survived through grace in Jesus Christ. Amen. It is no wonder why the teachings of Christ Jesus are not welcomed in the nations that rule through anarchy and dictatorship. Our Lord and Savior, however, admonished his followers in verse 44 to love our enemies and exemplify that we are Christians. It is this kind of love that demonstrates true Christianity to the world. Such love reflects the love God has for sinners. It is the greatest proof of the power of the gospel and the fact that we are followers of Christ. Let us see John 13, 34 to 35. A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another, by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye love one another. Our Lord commanded that we should love one another as he has loved us. But can we really love like God? 
And if not, why? And what is the difference between our type of love and God's love? God's love extends beyond all barriers. It is the opposite of human love. God even loves and cares for those who are his enemies by supplying their needs. God's love is unconditional. It does not depend on our goodness. Yes. Therefore, in understanding God's love, for us, we must never attribute our human ideas of love to God. And this is where many go wrong. Verse 45 reads, For he makes his son to rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. And ladder number five, God's love to humanity is infinite and unfathomable that no one can justify before him. And this reality was made known to Apostle Paul because he saw the conditions under which we were all and still living as he expressed in the book of Romans 5, 6 to 10. For when we were yet sinners, without strength in due time, Christ died for us. For scarcely a righteous man we won't die. Yet for adventure, for a good man, some will even dare to die. But God commended his love towards us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. He tells us that while we were incapable of saving ourselves, wicked people, still sinners, and even enemies of God, he redeemed us through the death of his son. Such love is beyond our comprehension, but it is real because God says so and demonstrates it on the cross of Christ. And ladder number six, the choice is now ours to follow God and start making positive efforts towards developing a healthy relationship with God. Nobody has the key of life and death. Every day we sleep, we die. And it is when we open our eyes in the morning that we know we still have another day, which may not even end its hours before some are suddenly taken away. And this also reminded me of another testimony our daughter made on Friday when she was singing to that yesterday had gone, today is yours. Today is not even fully yours. Because we may not even see 10 o'clock tonight and much more tomorrow. So which means the hour you are breathing is what you know. And the psalmist said, and the psalmist saw it in Psalm 90, 3 to 6, you turn man back into dust and say, Return, O children of men, for a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it passes by, or a watch in the night. You have swept them away like a flood. They fall asleep. In the morning it flourishes as person new. Towards evening it fades away and feathers away. No one knows when the hour to return to our Creator for Him or her will come. It does not depend on age. It does not depend on how holy and godly you are. It does not depend on how careful you are with your diet, with your health, or with your style of living. Yeah. Death comes when we least expect without notice. Yeah. How prepared are you? What are you doing with your talents that your Creator has given to you to glorify Him? Where will death meet you? And in what condition? Mm. Some people beg for death as a way of escape. Instead of trying to fight on and improve themselves, but death still refuses to take them away. Amen. Some waste away their lives believing that they will still live forever. Then there is still time to make up all the opportunities of the past 20 years only to be proved wrong. God does not hate us. In fact, he said that he does not rejoice in the death of sinners, but that sinners should come to repentance. Amen. And if that be the case, 
What then draws us to God? Let us see the book of Jeremiah 31 3. The Lord had appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Many people are running away from God because they think that He is out to punish them. But the truth is that God loves us and gave us His only Son, so that whoever believes in Him should not be lost but have eternal life. And this is what draws us to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Our letter number seven. If then our God is love, as some people may still be disposed to ask, what indications or assurance do we have of his love for us? The Bible provides us with this answer in 1 John 3, 1 to 2. Behold, what manner of love the Father had bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Yeah. Beloved, yeah. now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Yeah. Amen. Not only does God love us unconditionally, but he has given us a new standing before him. Anyone who is a child of God, through faith in Christ, need not to have a low self-esteem. We have become children of the King of Kings. And this is what gives us hope, security, and self-worth that put a spring in our step. With our heads up, it gives us the ability to face whatever is ahead. If you believe in him, he will demolish the world of Jericho in your life. If you believe in him, like the small shepherd David, you will overcome the giant in your life. And that will be your portion in Jesus' name. Our ladder number eight. From all that we have been told today, the secret message of the good news has been revealed clearly to us that we do not have any more reason to claim ignorance of the love of God in Christ Jesus or to look for any reason whatsoever not to serve God. We do not have any reason to doubt God's love for us. As God reassures us, in 1 John 4, 16, and we have known and believed the love that God had to us. God is love. And he that dwells in love dwells in God and God in him. What this means is that God does not only love us with an everlasting love, but he himself is love. Every other aspect of God's character, which is his whole, his glory, his unconditional love, there are some things which May, we may not understand, but everything he does is in the context of God is love. Amen. And the ladder number nine, I am really very happy today. Amen. And I'm really very thankful to my Lord Jesus for giving me this wonderful opportunity of enjoying the benefits of God's perfect love, Amen. and which I am also offering you today. Amen. And what does this perfect love cast out? We read in John 4, 17 to 18. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Because fear has torment, he that feareth is not made perfect in love. Fear is the result of sin. Because we have all sinned. We are all victims to the fear of death. As we read in Hebrew 2, 14 to 15. Only God's redemption or redeeming love casts out this fear. And finally, the ladder number 10. There are 10 things which cannot separate us from the love of God. If we have established our personal relationship with God, 
As Apostle Paul said in Romans 8, 35 to 39, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword as it is written for thy sake we are killed all the day long we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter nay in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us hallelujah For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. 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 Although, as Christians, we may face many hardships in this world. Our joy and our peace come from knowing that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Amen. God is eternal, and therefore His love is everlasting. Amen. It is the cornerstone of our salvation. He offers us this free gift of salvation in Christ, purely on the basis of His unconditional love for us, the only thing that can keep us from experiencing this unconditional love is our rejection of his saving grace. And may it never be true of you in Jesus' name. Amen. The hour is now. The hour is now to make that great decision which is long overdue. Amen. Tomorrow may be too late. I am not asking you to come forward and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior because you may already have done so. But you still need that little push to assist you in reestablishing your personal relationship with God. Most of us are still struggling to wholeheartedly build our hope on the love of God. But our hearts are still not strong enough do not depend upon your own effort or your good works. But when the children of God are being called for the altar call, do not sit down and resign to your state of hopelessness. Shake off that old garment of sin, which is your sickness. Like that blind beggar when he was told that Jesus called him, as we read in Mark 10, 46 to 51. And they came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, and a great number of, of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the high side, begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. But he cried the more a great deal. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Today, Jesus is also passing by. Amen. And we are the blind beggar. We are shouting, have mercy on me. But the devil is pulling you back. Don't go. Don't stand up. They told him to shut up, to keep his peace, to keep his peace, shut up. Don't disturb the master. But the more they shouted on him to shut up, the more he shouted aloud. Have mercy upon me. That's one of the very have mercy upon me. Amen. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind beggar, saying unto him, Be of good comfort. Rise, he called thee. And he cast in away his garment. He rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What will thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way. Thy faith hath made thee whole. 
and immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. Jesus is standing in our midst today. Amen. And once again today offering you his hand of friendship. Are you still going to sit down and refuse to cast away your garment of sinfulness and human failures? Or are you going to stand up and come forward to receive this special prayer and be healed? You have your chance today when you are invited to come forward for altar call. This is the truth. Make today a turning point in your life. The love of God will set you free and your life will never be the same again. In Jesus' name, our Lord. Amen. May God bless you all. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's now time for altar call.
can be safe, Father. I surrender, Lord. What can we say, Father? I surrender, Lord. Lord, my God, you are so real. You are alive. There is no one like you. There is no one like you, Lord. You are great. You are powerful. You are wonderful. You are marvelous. You are excellent. You are all. Jehovah. 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 A forgiven God. A merciful God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah, Jesus. We thank you, Father. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I share as it uses it. Heavenly Father, you are alive. Heavenly Father, death could not hold you captive. You are Jesus. You are Jesus. The solid rock which we stand. You are Jesus, the life giver. You are Jesus, our provider. You are Jesus, our way maker. You are Jesus, our protector. We thank you, Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. Your people have come before you because they know that there is a God. They know that there is a problem solver. Your people have come before you, Father. They are surrounding all to you, O God. In the mighty name of Jesus. The name that is so powerful. The name that every knee shall bow to. The name that every tongue shall confess that you are Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Our God who makes the impossible possible. Our God who opened doors that no man.